Hi, Kelly. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I love, personally love, talking to writers. Thank you. Um, and you've written quite a few books, and this is your first novel. I, yes, this is my first novel. Yes. And I have to say, it may not look like it right now, but it is summer, and... <laughs> This is the perfect beach read because I feel like you really inject the book with so much insider knowledge of New York's fashion and celebrity and art scenes that I, I for example, wouldn't be able to do. So let's start with that. How did you come up with the plot? So uh, I actually wrote part of this book when I was at Columbia University. Um, my writing professor wanted me to write a memoir because um, that's basically what you do mm -hmm. in that program. And I just was like, I'm too young to write a memoir, but I've had all this experience. Started, you know, I started modeling at 16, so let's just start you know, writing about all those experiences. And so when I was talking to my literary agent, he's like, well, what do you want to write about? And I'm like, well, I need to write about what I know. And so my, actually my daughter was looking through some of my you know, old, um, old work, and she was like, Mom, you have to write this. this is, you already wrote this, so you have to write it again. And so I kind of, in, I, you know, it's, the, it's m the mini memoir that I started at Columbia, but then I injected, you know, four major characters. They're all models. They met when they were 16, and now they're 40. And so do you actually keep journals? Is that what your daughter found? I do keep journals, yes. <laughs> I am an avid journal writer. Amazing. I just, I just think it's an amazing way of cataloging, you know, your dreams, um, your nightmares, you know, the great things that happen during the day, sometimes, you know, the hopes that you want for the future. I just think that, um, you know, writing a journal has been something that I've always owned all my life. And, yes, they do uh, go through. They call them diaries. I call them journals. We're going to call them journals. Thank you. It's so, much, you. It's so much more yes. elegant, I, I think. I think so. I think so. Now, Lucy is a mover and a shaker. She's, I guess, I think what anyone who moves to New York at a certain age wants to be. Can you describe her for us? And uh, Lucy's the lead character in the so book. So Lucy Brockton is the lead character. She uh, is, the, is loosely based on me. She came to New York at 16 with her mother. She was a model. And she was, she actually met Titus Brockton, the most famous artist in the world, on an airplane, uh, coming from Chicago to New York. And she becomes a model and starts working and realizes that there's more out there than just modeling. And, you know, her friends, you know, that's what happens when you're a model. It's like, you know, one day you're doing really, really well. And then the phone calls stop start, you know, stop call, people stop calling. And so, you know, Lucy decided to go back to school, and she got her MFA, um, which we can't swear, but uh, we can't, there's a funny way of... You can swear. Oh, um, her friends call it um, a master in fucking arts. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, it's just, you know, it's, she just basically, you know, transitioned from a model into a writer, and, you know, she was like me, you know, wrote what she know. Wrote, wrote, she writes what she knows, and she works for a magazine called Snob Magazine. And Snob Magazine is, um, so Vanity Fair was named after Thackeray, one of his works, and Snob is also named after one of his works. Um, and you should, if you ever want to read any of the um, essays from Snob, they're actually brilliant. So, um, you know, we have those kind of like fun little um, moments in the book. But anyway, she's a model. She's now a writer. She's working for Snob Magazine, and her boss um, is like, you know, we're just basically, you're the wife of Titus Brockton, so we're just going to, like, give you this, you know, this article to write. And she it, takes it really seriously because she knows this is her big moment. And I think that's one thing that's really exciting about her and about, you know, with women and men that want to come to New York is that, you know, all of a sudden you get this break and someone's like, okay, I like you and I want you to work for me. And then they say, you know, do all this, like the work that you ne wouldn't necessarily want to do. And what's great about Lucy is that she's a yes girl. She's like, you want me to write that article? It sounds daunting, but I'm gonna do it. And that's what I think is really exciting about young New Yorkers is that they're so enthusiastic and inspired to do like these new innovative things. And so I'm hoping that you see a lot of yourself in Lucy. How much of you is in Lucy? How much of what? Of you. How much of who? <laughs> Am I allowed to answer those questions? Uh, how much is, it, you know, she's a lot of me. She's a lot of me. I mean, I had a lot of fear coming here as a young age. Um, I had big hopes, big dreams. Um, and I just, you know, I always wanted more. 
And I, you know, had a lot, I wouldn't say it was ambition, I just, you know, I, I saw a lot of interesting people and I'm an, a, the ultimate voyeur and an incredible observer and I just love people and I love people. And <laughs> I just do, I just, I love to observe them. And so, you know, I've always wanted, I, it's been fun to, you know, write all these even books, like even like the, you know, the social history books about the Hamptons or the Bikini. You know, I, I'm just very intrigued and interested in things I don't know. Now, you're really well known. Are you able to be an observer? Because that's one thing that I'm always curious about. The more, especially talking to actors, is the more famous they become, the less they can be the observer, the more they are the observed. And they say that it really impacts their lives. So you, as a writer, are you just able to kind of pull yourself back, sit at a cafe outside and just people watch without being bothered? I mean, thank you for saying that. I mean, um, I guess I'm infamous for my antics. Um, I'm not necessarily famous. Um, I don't see myself as famous. Um, but I do sit at cafes and I do watch. So if you hear me like listening to what you guys are saying, like I am, I can hear over here. Um, I just, you know, I just love it. I just love hearing what people are talking about. I just love, I'm interested in their stories. You know, everyone has a story. And that's one thing that I loved, you know, when I was working for, you know, whether it's, you know, magazines or writing, you know, writing for AM New York, all those incredible profiles. Like everyone has an incredible story and everyone has come from somewhere. So I'm just very intrigued by, you know, who you are, where you came from, and um, what I can learn from you. And by the way, what we saw of you on TV in The Real Housewives is in no way reflected in what who you are as a person. So that was some majorly creative editing, I, I was say. so mad. I was like, don't you want to see my real life? They're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I know people. They're like, we don't care. I'm like, I've got kids. They're like, you do? <laughs> I went I'm to like, Columbia. Oh, well. They're like, where? <laughs> Columbia? Is that a country? I'm like, yes. And... <laughs> A college. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> You're like, I do have a brain. It's up here, and yeah. it functions a lot. All right, so it's all good, you know. It's all good, right? It gets you to where you are. It, you know what? It's just, you just go with the flow. Now, this book features a really tight circle of girlfriends. Yes. Who are these women based on, and do you have similar women in your own life, like your own squad? So um, my squad is actually, um, they're teenagers. Um, I'm always with teenagers all the time. I just actually posted. Your two daughters. Yes, my two daughters. Yeah, yeah, that sounded weird. Um, <laughs> Let's I mean, clarify. I like, love to hang out with young kids. Um, I, <laughs> what? I, <laughs> you guys help me out here. So um, I have two teenagers. My youngest is turning 16 and my oldest is just turned 18. And um, their friends are always around us all the time, which is so much fun. And I just spent Memorial Day weekend with them. And my daughter's like, oh my God, post a photo of like my squad. And I'm like, but we're all eating ice cream. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, but wait, your photos are not your, you with me eating ice cream. You're like, you know, duck face. And I have to do the photo with my kids eating ice cream. So that's, they're my amazing squad. Um, but this book does have four characters. There are four friends. And, you know, I was really inspired by Sex and the City. I was really inspired by um, the ensemble cast of Real Housewives. I was really inspired by, you know, women that are, you know, have these friends for a long time and that can confide in them. And, you know, for me, the most important thing about these characters is that they're in a committed relationship. So it's conflict, it's resolution. It's not like, you know what, you're so nice and we've known each other for 15 years, but we're done. Like, that's not how they are. Oh, what does that sound like? <laughs> They're like, you are being out of control, and I'm going to put you in a timeout, and then I'm going to come back, and we are going to fix this problem. And I just think that's so exciting about these characters is that they're, they're fixers. And they, and that's what I, you know, I'm from the Midwest. Like, that, that's, that, that's how I was raised. Like, when I came to New York, and, you know, women would be, like, you know, looking me up and down, you know, with these, like, daunting looks. But that's not how we are in the Midwest. We're like, who are you? Why do you want to know me? Oh my God, we're going to be best friends. Like that's just how I was raised. So, um, and I feel I find a lot of people in New York that are have that kind of mentality. And I have an amazing, amazing friend group that's very diverse. And I've been lucky too. I've met a lot of you know my friends through modeling. I've met a lot of my friends through college because um, I went to three colleges. Um, and I've met a lot of my friends through. Um, you know, the, the um, writing world and through L accessories and through fashion. So I have this very di diverse group of friends um, through the equestrian world. I mean, I when you have come to a party at my house, it's like this 
huge melange of people. And I just, you know, I, I don't care who you are as long as you're awesome at what you do. And speaking of awesome, I think what's awesome about your book is that it really captures the spirit of New York that heightened expectation when people first move here. I mean, do you remember the first time you, went, you came to New York and you were like, I, I could do anything. I could be anyone. Anything is open to me. Yes, I was 16. I was wearing tree torns. I had my white tennis shorts on and my white polo shirt. And I got off the plane, and they're like, we'd like you to introduce you to this famous photographer named Patrick Demarchier. I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, is that what you're wearing? I'm like, yeah, why not? They're like, you're wearing shorts? I'm like, yeah, and I'm wearing tree torns. And he, to this day, you know, he's photographed like, you know, Lady Diana and like the most amazing women in the world. And he's like, oh yeah, I remember meeting Kelly and her tree torns and white tennis shorts. I was like, you know what? See, he remembered me. And you, you, So wear tree torns. And be authentic. Yeah, that's the takeaway, wear tree, tree torns. What is different, <laughs> uh, in terms of your writing process, how did you approach writing this book versus your nonfiction? Um, you know, the nonfiction are just uh, so incredibly exciting. You know, writing my first book about the Hamptons, you know, just learning so much about, you know, I mean, this is pre-Google. I mean, I've been writing the lexicon of my life. You guys are obviously very young, but I'm old. And um, so when I started writing in the spirit of the Hamptons, I mean, I was literally you know, interviewing people, so it was anecdotes, because, you know, it's like one person will say one thing, and then they'll be like, oh, what well, you should ask that so-and-so about something else. So it was like this constant train of, you know, checking, fact-checking, oh, so-and-so said this, is that true? Um, which is actually really, really an exciting part of the process. And then, obviously, spending tons and tons of time doing research, because it's a social history book. Um, so spending tons and tons of time at the library in East Hampton, which was so exciting. And so much fun. I mean, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so don't tell anyone. Good God, when you said that, I was like, spending hours at the library. Yeah, I'm so like, so exciting. Do not tell anyone. So much fun. That's our secret. So don't tell anyone about that. No one is watching this, so we're no good. One knew. No one knows. No. Kelly is not a nerd. No. So that was just really exciting for me, and I just loved. Um, I just loved, you know, finding out these, you know, these stories and like fact checking them. Um, and that was just, it was just, it was so interesting too, learning about, you know, all the artists and the Bonnikers and, you know, Teddy Roosevelt bringing his Rough Riders there because they had malaria and then he knew that he could bring them there because no one was going to be exposed to them. I mean, just like all these, you know, and all this beautiful Stanford White, this incredible architect, Stanford White, who built these amazing houses there. And, um, you couldn't bring, um, you know, any of the... Uh, any of the materials across um, Amagansett. So they had to bring them over the cliffs. So it was just this very cool, the cool stories that I'm, you know, I'll never forget. And okay, wait, now you're getting me to nerd out. Okay, that is just such a great book, by the way, in the spirit of the hand. Yeah. You gotta read that. It's just like amazing. And then, you know, obviously, then I moved to um, American Style, which was so much fun. And because I was literally sitting at a fashion show, and uh, this girl was like, oh my God, I love this show. Those pants are so 30s. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I'm like 23 years old, and like, I don't think that they're 30s. Like, I, Rosie the Riveter, hello? Like, is anything? Um, and so I decided to write this book for the Met called American Style, which was basically this fun compilation of all of um, the pop culture icons and American designers to celebrate, like, you know, why we're significant, you know, who we were where we are today and where we're going. And then I, instead of doing it in a real real way, like a real writer would do it, I mixed up the alphabet. So it was this fun juxtaposition of like A and F and Z and R. Um, and then Condé Nast gave me all their archives. And then I actually wrote and edited the book on my Blackberry. So it was 30 to 50 words, because I believe in like small, I, I talk a lot, but when I write, I'm like very concise. So bear with me. <laughs> So, and, and then the bikini book, sorry. The bikini book, 400 pages, all about the bikini book, all about the bikini. Um, that was, like, really horrible. Like, I hated that book. It was, like, such a nightmare. Uh, and it was so much fun, so much fun. The bikini is such an incredible vehicle to celebrate all these women and men um, and their amazing, amazing bodies and their lifestyles and, you know, how they love to, you know, spend their free time and um, show off what they have. So that was really, really fun. Um, so those have been a different process because it's social history and it is fact. Uh, a novel is loosely based on my life, so there are some facts, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. And uh, it's just been really, I just really wanted to write a book that really celebrated New York. So when you, you know, when you cha open chapter 44, 
September 1, New York Fashion Week. You know what it looks like, smells like, tastes like, feels like, what they're wearing. Like if I was describing this room, I would say, you know, red shirt, baseball cap, floral shirt, orange earrings. I'm like very, very clued into, I'm like a visual writer. And um, I really wanted the reader to be excited about where they are. And like, oh my God, I'm gonna go to Il Cantinori or I'm gonna have a glass of rosé at Morandi. Like, is that where you have glass of rosé? I'm like, yeah, they have amazing rosé. So I just wanted to have this like celebration of New York. And then the characters too, you know, I wanted these characters to be like us. You know, I'm a little bit of Sarah, you know, an uptown girl that wanted to be on a reality show and had to wear extensions. I'm a little bit of Billy, you know, that girl from Rockford, Illinois that, you know, had passion and like wanted to, you know, like soak up New York, like you were saying, you know, I'm a little bit of Lada. I can be a whole lot of fun. Um, and I'm, a, you know, and I'm a little bit of Lucy, you know, I'm that, you know, um, constant observer. I have a lot of empathy. Um, I am interested in people and I, you know, want to know more about everything. And in terms of, uh, did I answer the question? Yes, you actually did. That was a really, really, really good answer. It's like so long we did that. I was like, whoa! <laughs> you do a ton of stuff outside of writing. You do a lot of charity. You're a huge athlete. And also, you are apparently ageless. <laughs> and I know you have a very, very interesting wellness philosophy. So talk to me about that. Uh, so when I was on Housewives, uh, The Real Housewives of New York, um, on Bravo, I, um, was all, I was asked constantly um, what I wear, who does my hair, how old I am, uh, do I really have kids, and what do I do for a living? Well, wait, wait, let me backtrack. <laughs> like, you have fake prop kids? <laughs> no, no, really. Like, did they think like, that yeah, you went really to like mine. a they're casting like, really call? Yeah, they're not accessories. They're really, really mine. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, fake prop kids. Yeah. Hey guys, can we meet my kids today? Um, so I wrote this book called "I Can Make You Hot," which is an acronym for Healthy Options Today. Um, I wanted to write a book that just really like focused on Midwestern values and that you can, you know, live well if you have a uniform for the way that you eat, um, like you have a uniform for your dress. On Sunday, you have fun day, and you can like have margaritas and pizza and cake and do whatever you want, just as long as during the week you, um, you know, have a schedule of you know exercise and eating well. Because I feel like eating well is the best revenge. Like if you eat well, your engine is working and functioning, and you have as much energy as I do. And I mean, you're like a living testament to that. So what are you having for dinner tonight? <laughs> I, don't know. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet. Um, but. The great thing, thank you for saying that I'm ageless. Um, I'm 48 years old, and um, one reason I think that I look the way that I do is because I'm curious. Um, it's really not because of the way I eat. It's not because of the way that I exercise. It's because I am, like, eternally curious, and I, you know, love meeting people, and I love not knowing things, and I love um, being ignorant so someone can open my mind and um, make me see something new. Like, I will forever, forever, forever be curious. So that's just kind of, like, who I am. Do you really strike up conversations in elevators? Yes. Oh. I'm like, oh my god, hi! And they're like, she's so weird. <laughs> and my assistant, Kevin, who's back there, hey, Kev. Um, so I'm just saying, hey, Kev. Uh, he's always like, why are you talking to that stranger? I'm like, they're, they seem really interesting. I love that coat. He's like, oh, my God. Like, why? Why is she talking? Even my kids are like, Mom, stop asking them questions. You don't know them. I'm like, but I like that, and I wanted to know about that. What's been the strangest elevator encounter you've ever had? Um, when someone back, was coming back to me, and they're like, aren't you on TV? And I was like, wait, no, 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 no. I ask the questions. You do not. Wait a minute. No. No, 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 no. Don't try to turn the tables on me here. So if someone made a movie based on this book, and who would you want to have play Lucy? Someone like so gorgeous. No, um, who would I Duh. want? To, uh, duh. Who would I want to play Lucy? Um, she's 40. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I got to like check out the 40 year olds that Maybe some unknown person. I, I don't know if I'd want like a really, like a, I don't think I would want a studied actor. I think I would want someone that I just saw on the street and I was just like, oh my God, it's her. Because Lucy isn't about a person, it's an energy. And do you have it in you to write another novel? 
yes. either a sequel or something totally Oh, I'm, in, I'm writing my second novel right now. It's a sequel. It's called A Dangerous Time. Here you go. Dangerous, dangerous time. Dangerous like my middle name, by the way. Isn't it yours? <laughs> Wait, what movie is that from? <laughs> I don't know. Dangerous I, I just made that. No, it's Austin, it was Austin Powers. Oh, right. So. Oh, well. <laughs> I think, but I could be wrong. Whatever, whoever. So what is, uh, before we turn it over to the audience, talk to me a little bit about the sequel. What can you say? Uh, the sequel... Tease is, it. Yeah. The sequel is all about Brooklyn. And, you know, everyone talks about Brooklyn as being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn is so incredible, and there's so much opportunity there. And um, I actually walked down the street, and I saw, I walked into the store, and it said, choose love. And I was like, oh, yeah, I love it here. Uh, so I just wanted to really celebrate Brooklyn and show that, you know, New York has legs and um, it's just an amazing area. So we're going to go there and we're going to also take some time in the Hamptons, too. So I want you guys to see the Hamptons through the eyes of my four major beauties. But also the great thing about Dangerous Age is not just about women, is that I, w when, it, when I was writing the novel, I was like, how come people don't talk about the hot amazing men in New York. Why are they always like, it's Mr. Big, and he's a loser, and he like, doesn't like you, he's doesn't not that back. hot. Like, he's like, too cool for school. I'm like, no, 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 my, the men in my book are so awesome. They're educated, they're smart, they're athletic, they're savvy, they're sophisticated, they wear the sickest shoes. They think, are so hot. I think if anyone knows footwear, it's you. <laughs> No, and I just wanted to like celebrate all the men in New York. And I want like I don't want women to be Tinderellas. I want them to have respect for themselves. And I want the men to be like, I am so hot, and that girl is so hot, so we should be like one big hot moment. That's what I, I think want. if there's one takeaway from this interview, it's gonna be hashtag Tinderella. Tinderella. No and, Tinderellas. And now no. to our audience, please. How's it going, Kelly? Hi. My name is Zebby. Um, my Hi, question Zebby. is for your writing. Do you have a very strict writing regimen, or do you just um, write whenever you find like the inspiration? Uh, really good question. So, because I have a very unusual life, I have to compartmentalize. And so, um, you know, I have teenage girls who take up. That's my priority and my legacy are my girls. Um, everything else just is, you know, ex exciting, and I love it. Um, but you know, typically, what I do is I. Set, to, set you know, sorry, aside some time, and I write, and no one's allowed to bother me. Because basically, like, I just want to, like, dream. Like, when I write, I'm just like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this is happening. This is, like, so much fun. It's just a big dream moment for me. And, like, any of the things that I, you know, liked or didn't like during the day, like, I take a lot of notes. And then when I start to write, I just, you know, start to dream. Do you walk around with a notebook, or is it more on your iPhone? Um, I have both. I have a little notebook in my bag, and then I put notes on my iPhone. Do, I do both. It depends. I mean, like on my iPhone, I'll just write, you know, um, you know, write about meeting with the editor, write about, you know, things like that, and then I'll it'll trigger, you know, things for me to write about. Next question, please. Hi, Miss Kelly. It's nice to have you here. You don't have um, to call me Miss Kelly. You can call me right, Kelly. Kelly. Hey. Uh, <laughs> hey. Okay. So this actually is my first summer in New York, so I'm excited to read your book because it will give me kind of inside of what I should do, where I should go. So I have, what are top three top things that you would like kind of say that I should do while I'm here for the summer as being my first summer? And what's one fitness tip that you've carried from your modeling career to now because you do look amazing? And my third question. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Oh my God! You know I have like ADD, and now you're asking me three yeah, questions. Yeah, let's let's oh do the, let's answer God. the first two questions. Can I get a notebook here? Like, okay, <laughs> let's do the first two, and then we'll do the third. Okay, the second is just super easy. Um, when I was a model, you know, I traveled by myself because that's what you do when you're a model. Everyone thinks it's like you have this entourage, like Kim Kardashian. That's not true. It's you yourself and you, only alone on an airplane, going from like one group to the next group to the next group for months at a time, years at a time. So I literally would run. Because I was like, I'm in Paris for the first time. I'm like 18 years old. I don't speak French, a little, maybe a little bit. And I have no idea where I'm going, so I'm just going to start running. So I literally would run the streets and learn the city. So I've run everywhere. I've run in Africa. I've run in Paris, Milan. Uh, I mean, I've literally run all over the world. And that was just a way of me to 
again, like I'm, I'm a very visual person, so I'm like, oh, I saw that, I saw that, and that's cool. And then, and also too, it's just so much fun. Like when you're in Rome, like you know, that's one of my characters. She's like, when you're in Rome, you can smoke, even though she doesn't smoke. But when you're in Rome, like do like that. You know, it's like you go to these different places, and then all of a sudden you see the culture, and you can, you know, if you're in the trenches, you're a part of it. If you're just walking around, like what's going on or on your phone, you're not engaged. And I think that was one of the biggest luxuries that you know, I had as a model is being able to like, run the streets and be a part of the culture. That was really exciting to me. Um, so now the first question, because I don't do things like in regular order. Um, I'm just crazy like that. So the first question, what to do in New York. Um, what to do in New York, go to Grand Banks. It's this beautiful boat on the West Side Highway where you can have like oysters and beer and it's this amazing, amazing old boat. Um, definitely go down to Tribeca and see all the sailboats because they're so incredible. Um, and the waterfront there is just the, amazing. What they've done with it the is... The waterfront is so gorgeous and like, f you know, five o'clock on a, you know, or, you know, early on, the, on Friday, the, the men are very attractive, and they're all wearing suits, so your mom will like them. Um, so what else do I like? Central Park is just so gorgeous. They have a lot of concerts. Bryant Park has a lot of concerts. Bryant Park actually is so charming for lunch. Like you can like go get a salad there, and you know just sit on the green grass all you know all afternoon. Um, it's just really really pretty. Um, what else do I like to do? Walk them down Madison Avenue. I mean, if you know, I always say like if you can't spend the money, you can always look like you are. So you're like, oh my God, I'm totally buying that Chanel bag. That's going to be mine. Okay, one more question on that note. Where's the best people watching in New York? The best people watching in New York, um, I mean, everywhere. I just. I kind of think Madison Avenue. I mean, Madison Avenue is certain kinds of people watching. Um, I kind of like the 59th and 5th Avenue because it's like tourists, Park people, area, yeah. work. It's like very, 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 very mixed. And you kind of get a strong sense immediately of like the energy and the pulse of New York. But Madison Avenue is gorgeous. And you have one more question? You don't? Okay, all right, we're moving on. Thank you. Hi, Kelly, thanks for being here. I know you have a jewelry line. It has really cute stuff. Have you thought about expanding into doing maybe clothing or swimsuits or anything like that? Um, uh, I haven't, but I now have. Um, thank you for that. I love all these ideas. We're full keep service. them going. Keep them going. No, we're full service here at AOL. We'll, oh, we'll, oh, give, you, yeah, you we'll give you writing ideas, oh, yeah. business ideas, whatever you need. Thank you. Uh, yes, so the jewelry. I've been making jewelry all my life, and I don't know if you know, but um, I was the editor of Elle Accessories, so I started um, that magazine. It was the first offspring of Elle, so that was really exciting. I did two issues, and I was their editor, which meant that I was responsible for all the content. So all the visual content, like what shoes, bags, you know, girls, whatever it was, went in there, and then um, all the writing. So all you know, every single writer that was working for L Accessories at the time was hired by me. Um, and I have a very unusual sense of writing style, and so the people that write for me have to have that same ex you know, excitement and energy, and I want them to always bring um, you know, their enthusiasm um, to, to the page. Um, so that was really exciting. So from just loving to make, making jewelry since I was 16 years old for my friends, to working to Alex Accessories and seeing the most beautiful stones and jewelry in the world, I was continued to make, I was very inspired and I continued to make my own jewelry, um, which sold at Barney's New York and Bergdorf Goodman and you know Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's, da 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 da. And then um, actually last, two weeks ago Thursday, I was on HSN for the first time selling my own jewelry line and that was incredible. That was incredible. I talked for three hours. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? I was literally, no, you guys are seriously. I was talking for three hours. Like literally, I was you like. Literally can't stop, right? Like you just have to keep up a patter of conversation. So my daughters were tweeting, you know, in the tweeting. They were texting me afterwards. I'm like, mom, stop telling stories about my junior prom. <laughs> seriously, do not tell them about my junior prom. I was like, but you wore my necklace. That was so exciting. She's like, mom, don't tell stories like that. She's like, people are really gonna like believe that. I'm like, you did, it was true. 
So it was really fun. And the jewelry is so beautiful, and I'm so proud of and it. And it's so affordable, too, I it's might add. It's so affordable. The, you know, the median price is $50, and it's, you know, necklaces and bracelets and earrings, and it's all kind of a, a boho glamour uh, inspiration. I mean, when people talk about boho chic, I don't want you to have be boho chic. I want you to be glamorous and gorgeous and the most beautiful version of you. And last question, please. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know, when do you know what that, when do you know that you're finished with writing? Like, when do you feel comfortable? Like, you put the pen down or, or the computer down and you're like, I finished, like, that's the end product, I'm happy. Um, never. I mean, I think that there's all my, every single book that I've ever written, I mean, In the Spirit of the Hamptons, like, I wrote In the Spirit of the Hamptons too because the story continued. Um, you know, Dangerous Age, age definitely has to have a dangerous time because you can't just stop at a dangerous age. You can't just be like, okay, and then we're done. Okay, and scene. No, there's just so much, there's so much more to explore. You know, characters are always trying and changing and always evolving, and that's what I love about the process. I love it that it's, that it's you know, kinetic and that it's constantly moving and constantly, you know, changing, and I just love that. I, I love that I'm like, I am done because my kids are coming back from, you know, from school and my dog is barking like a crazy person so I can't concentrate anymore. So that's kind of like when like, you know, I have to stop. But in my head, the stories are always going to be continuing and they're never going to stop and they're never going to I don't want to turn them off. So then you turn off who you are. Yeah, then like my curiosity goes away. And this book is available now online and in bookstores. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs>